let's be real I got my hands on the steering wheel I'm my blue Mustang I go where I want I do my own damn thing So shout out the mirrors I ain't looking back now Pedal to the floor Cause I'm not a backseat Take charge. Don't ask questions. I'm just living large, breaking all the rules. In a flash of light, I go flying by you. So shout at the mirrors. I ain't looking back now. Pedal to the floor, cause I'm not a backseat driver. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, Mac. Uh, so, I've been talking about this for last probably 12 hours or so, maybe 24 hours. Um, so, the new the new mutant is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, so that's what I want to run tonight. But uh, for those of you that are here already, thanks for stopping by. Um, I imagine uh, at least a few of you have heard me talk about this fit. Hey, Nida. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you have a good evening. Um, honest. Glad to have you here, Kay. Kay Omaristos. Omar Istos. Yeah. I've seen you around. And I know you joined Disc earlier. So yeah, this setup. Um, I don't think that, for me at least in Darks, the Munin, Serb, or Sac will never replace the Iki Terso. Uh, but this is a great cheap alternative similar to the cheap serve that i had um, and for those who don't know the mutant got reworked on tuesday and it has a um, explosion velocity bonus which is similar to having a mid-grade hydras in your head where am exactly okay nice well glad to have you here while you're while you're still up it's a late night for you um, so yeah, you have mid-grade hydras in your head, and I was actually looking at this. This is pretty similar to having two flare rigs, and if, if you look at like missile fits over the years, everyone always talks about flare rigs being inferior to rigger rigs, but I mean, if this hydra bonus is so important, then flares seem to be a good all option. Shield without web doesn't seem viable, so single web works. The T6 bit that I posted last night is single web. Um, and you probably could make no web work. I just, right now, like, so if you do a shield bit, you're gonna run a battery. I wouldn't do large ansel because you're just so thin. Um, so you're gonna run what? A pith or just large, and then maybe a boost amp or a hardener. Um, 
And then you've got all these low slots. So you actually have more low slots than a sacrilege. And those low slots would probably be, you know, damage control, two missile guidance enhancers, and ballistic control systems. But from all the time that I put in the Icky Tursa, I know that, so at tier six, these slots right here, that's all the tank that I have on my Icky, plus, you know, the implants. And right now I'm not, you can see the fit right here. I don't have any implants going on. So same, um, T6, I probably would stick with double bat. Um, in tier four, this has, so the double bat version that I ran last night, cap is similar to the Icky. Um, this, and you'll see, if you run single bat in T4, especially in dark, you just gotta know when you don't really need your rep. Um, and I have a nanobot accelerator, and again, you can see it all right here. Auxiliary nano pump and nanobot accelerator. So we're essentially saying more reps every time I press that button and then shorter cycle time. Yeah, aimed at T4. So T4, I wanna say, I mean, you're gonna watch me do it as is. I'm gonna bring synth just cause um, they're cheap and I might as well cause I'll be talking through, but I've run this without crash and I was running it at crash with that at tier five and it was fine. Um, I think if you run up into tier five, it's similar to the icky fit. I mean, you could push this through tier five if you wanna push a super cheap fit um, that high. But at that point, I mean, you're talking a fit that's not that more expensive than the Povertila um, put mid grades in or put mid grades in within, without an Omega and maybe throw, I mean, I'll definitely run standards just because again, it's cheap and the filaments are cheap. But at that point, I mean, you're cruising. Um, unless you want the challenge, it, it's, I think a billion-esque ship for tier five is, that's reasonable. Uh, so yeah, nothing fancy, um, fleet large. I, I did run a double bat version with single web. It's doable, but what you'll notice with the double web version is you apply better to FE Alties uh, by almost double. Pobertilla, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot closer to the Pobertilla than, than even I was thinking. Uh, I don't have an expensive rep here. This is just a B type. I mean, even I was talking about this on my YouTube comments earlier. The nice thing about armor setups is they are cheap. So really go A type. Uh, Navy multi-spectrum, again, super cheap, cheap ballistic controls. And, you know, the real bonus of running a reactive hardener in darks or running an armor fit in hearts is the darks is the reactive hardener. You'll see I only have rage. Uh, in the little bit of testing that I've had, I have not seen an instance where I wanted to swap to Navy. Now, when I ran single web, there were times where I swapped, swapped to Navy, but right now, dual web and rage is fine. Cheaper T4 fit. Yeah. Yeah. So again, like you could T2 these webs. We're fighting most things within 10 kilometers. Um, you could honestly look at all this power grid left. You could make this a T2 large battery. I mean, you could T2 all of this. I, I wouldn't T2 the rep though. You'd be pushing it. I mean, if you T2 the rep, just pop a standard booster and you're fine. But I mean, 650 mil, I, I think that's very reasonable for T4, especially uh, for what it's gonna do. So yeah, it's explosion velocity. Again, that's like mid-grade hydras, the part we care about. Uh, rate of fire bonus, pretty standard. Uh, actual missile damage bonus, which is nice. And then 3% to shield and armor. You'll notice that there's no range bonus, but um, in darks, again, with the icky, if, if I can make an icky tersa work in darks, I can make stock hand range work. I um, mean, I will. I don't think I would enjoy the munin, the hand munin outside of darks for that reason, but you have the sacrilege and you have the serve for outside of darks. So yeah, that's a fit. Let's stop talking about it and start being about it. Again, I wasn't running boosters earlier, but there is not to, and I'll be talking and not, and not paying attention as well as I should. Hope everybody's doing well. We've uh, we've had a cold going through our house. So myself and my daughter have been sick. Okay, signable room. And you can see bad habits here from the icky tursa. I immediately turn on my repper. You really don't need to do that. Go here. Let's see if we can run down this Ixion. If this wasn't the first room, I'm going to go to the Ixion first. This signable is going to catch us on the way. 
But I still want to go to this Ixion just because it's hurting my um, application. What is it giving me? Application or range. Okay, it's hurting my application. So you can see even here, we're not applying perfectly to signables, but it's still competitive. Let's get the webs on the Ixion. And then after I killed it, the, um, really, I, let's swap webs back here again. And I have not run this fit a lot, so you're going to see me learning and, and making mistakes as we go. And then my default orbit is at 7,500 meters here. Cause you still want to, for those that don't know in darks, um, while everybody gets the ship velocity bonus, NPCs still have their maximum orbit speed. Uh, so like a Demovic will go the same speed in dark as it does in exotic until you put a web on it. And, that's because it, it has essentially more gas in the tank and it can um, go a little bit faster. And you can see I've been over repping this entire time. So this is actually 2000 meters. Let's do 7,500. We don't need to be up close. We'll use our missile projection to our advantage and this is a 50%. That's the thing. other thing is if you go with Asclepians, I mean, if you're constantly running this, I mean, you're repping for so much of your shield buffer. And that's why, and definitely with the double bat fit, I'll run double nano pumps because just to have lower cycle times. In. So I'm not, you know, wasting so much of each rep. Got a Fury here and a Dramiel. Let's start making our way to the cache. I'm still only going to do bio cache tonight. There's definitely opportunities in this fit to loot more, but as, especially as I develop how I want to go about this. I mean, if you've watched me do the icky at all, I don't care about the loot. I care about runs completed. So yeah, when frigates um, fall behind in the abyss, they will um, practically, not practically, but mechanically, it's like they light a micro warp drive. And since you have two webs on them, you hit them a lot harder. So you want frigs to chase you. And I do have drones here that I could be using. You can see how little I use drones, but we'll just put them on this cache here for right now. So the cache, bring the drones back. We're just going to orbit the gate. Make the frigates come to me. And so the average clear time on this, I mean, is it's just not going to compete with the Iggy Tursa. But again, for the for the cost, it's going to be good clear times. And you can see my range here with these Rage hams is 17 kilometers. So a little bit less if you're chasing something, a little bit more if they're chasing you. And you can fly in such a way in, in darks that a lot of things are chasing you because most things um, have their optimal reduced, optimal line fall off. And then one thing I noticed is like, when I did have that fit last night where I swapped to Navy missiles, I was two-shotting Teslas. I'm not, from what I've seen, I'm not gonna get down to one-shotting Teslas with this setup in Rage. So as long as these still two shot, it's fine. Okay, let's activate our AB. Another nearly identical angel room. We're gonna use this time to just kind of coast in. We have, oh no, that's just the light on the blue cloud shining on the back of our ship. So we're if you're unfamiliar with how to deal with these higher tier Angel rooms. We're going to deal with these Lucifer signables first. Because I'm a missile ship, if an Ixion was in here, I would start making my way to that Ixion because it's dampening my missile ability. So you want to kill these Lucifers first because, you know, they still hit decently hard, but they're easier to kill than the elites. Get a 50%.
and the resist here is only 50% for the normals. And again, I'm definitely over repping. But fit wise, this is, I mean, very similar to the traditional sacrilege fit. We have just put more DPS back into the missiles and taken it out of the drone bay. And you'll see me not really use drones a lot. I have, you know, two Vespas and a Hornet. And that's from running the Icky Tursa in Darks and knowing that I can keep unbonused Vespas alive under a tower. I mean, if I bring that Hornet out and there's a tower out, I'm going to lose it pretty early on. But, I mean, there are opportunities to get more DPS out here. Uh, if, if you haven't hang, hung out before, when I run the Iggy Tursa, you'll, you'll see that I don't run a lot of heat at these lower tiers. Uh, one, just, just to show that there's a lot more potential from the fit for people that are interested in getting into it. Now, when I design a fit, um, and I would st still say I'm in the design phase for this. I'm, I'm pretty confident in this, but you know, there's always something that we can learn. Um, let's start making rid of the cache. I try not to use heat because then I can factor in worst case scenarios or, or when I've made a mistake. Now it's in T6, it's different. I mean, in T6, that's a resource that you should find an opportunity to use. So this guy webs, and if you don't know, you can just look down here to, and you can actually target off this to see who's webbing you. And I've had a, a couple of people this week ask me about, let's, okay, we don't don't need to over -rep. A couple of people ask me about running the sacrilege in darks, and you can, but again, having all those, all that DPS in your drone bay is, you know, you're not getting full use out of it in dark weather. And I'm not using my prop mod at the moment because I'm not running them. Um, I have seen, I think I've had two martial rooms, at least one, because um, someone had a comment about, you know, explosive marshals and how that would look with our resist. But I mean, the storm bringers in the room usually hit you harder than a marshal. And if it was, for that example, worst case scenario where you have, you know, all explosive marshals, well then you have a 60% boost on your reactive hardener, which that's, that would be very rare to have that. But from what I've seen, it's just, it's not an issue. See, again, we've had, you know, angel rooms, which aren't amazing for missile application, especially ham application. Um, we are a little bit ahead here than the serb because while the common serp fit runs about 100 more dps than this uh, we are not bonus you know most of that isn't in kinetic and if you can use the proper damage type in darks you will pull ahead so being while well, we just had this is a triple angel room i don't think i've ever had a triple angel room and i think we've had four four signables each time at least i can't remember if that first room had four signables plus an exam so i want to use this Invuln time to coast in because I want this Ixion. This is one of the few mobs that will try to fight you outside of your stock ham range. So I'm going to get as close as possible. Okay, they're active and I'm going for it. As you reload while we're closing range here. I mean, we've seen that the, the tank will hold so far. Let's get webs on this guy so he doesn't get away. And he's caught. We're just going to kill him. And then the other thing to check when you get disrupted is look at your module that they're disrupting. Because from what I've seen, you are you get hit with either range disruption or tracking disruption. Um, and I don't know of any other place to, to check it other than just hovering over module, but it's good to know what you're being hit with. Okay, so same as before. Let's kill the signables. right at the edge of a blue cloud. Let's start heading that way. Just a little bit. We've got 
yeah, we're super web, so they should be able to keep up. Now this is blank T4 right now. I did I popped two synth uh, boosters just because since I'm talking and learning, it gives me you know a small, a little bit more wiggle room. But you can definitely run this without implants. Uh, I think that first T4 clip that I posted earlier with the Vedmax, I was fully intending for that to be you know nothing. But then when I went back and I was rolling standards for T5, I jumped into an empty cloud and I'm like, I'm pretty sure that T4 clip is actually high grade Asclepians, but it ultimately doesn't matter because I pressed the repper once. So that single repper press, you know, it more than repped me up. But yeah, you don't, you don't need Asclepians in tier four. And I would say if you are looking at running the set, see where you're at without doing the Omega because you can get a lot of value without jumping into, you know, Omega costs. Okay, we have a burst down here. Burst heal. Where's he at? And you can see just how, you know, just the bad habits that I have from running the Icatrice. So I'm not targeting these frigs. But now we're going to take advantage of that blue cloud. This will be a, you know, a situation where if I had the mobile tractor unit, it would be beneficial. Once I kill this burst, I'll go get the loot. Let's do this too. Let's use that drone bay. Oh yeah, so my, my normal ad message just popped up. If anybody sees ads when, you know, randomly, other than when I say, hey, we're going to do an ad break, just let me know. Because I'm trying a few different ad methods because ultimately, um, while the, the revenue does help the stream, what I care about is only running ads when we're in a position to do it so that way you guys aren't missing a run or you're missing you know parts of the conversation yeah I, banner ads is something that that i i did see um when i joined twitch decent can ultimately i just don't want it to be disruptive for viewers again you know subs and ads help me uh with you know the money that I put into the stream and just some of the stuff that I do on this character, all, all the money that I make on the stream is going back into this character, <laughs> like yeeting the auto cannon munin the night before the changes, which that was it was such a horrible ship. Um, I, I didn't give it a fair chance, but because I put it in the firestorms, but yeah, oh, but yeah, if when we do ads, just let me know if you see them outside of that, because I'm I'm trying to find a best method. Uh, so that we can control that. So what I'll do is I'll do another run here in this set and then I will do a short break just for those ads while we get uh, set up for the next run and then we'll uh, we'll do it that way. Uh, it honestly, it feels great, Kalu. It's good to have you here. Um, I ran, I briefly ran tier six in it last night in with a single web uh, and it was, it was impressive. Uh, I, I have a T6 fit already, so I don't, in, in the Icky Tursa that is, so running a T6 Dark Munin is not something that I personally will do, but I would say it's viable. Um, I don't like promoting fits until I've put a lot of time in, or somebody that I know um, has put a lot of time in, but I would say that the Munin offers a new, relatively cheap alternative for high tier Dark. And I would say you could easily run this in tier five. So Minotaur resists are interesting. Let me let me pay attention here so I don't kill myself on a test respawn. Um, we do have the reactive hardener. This huge EM resistance here helps you with a lot. And we have still excellent thermal. Um, the main thing is just knowing how spawns work in dark and what is actually going to do damage to you. So sitting in the middle of Sancha, you're going to take damage, but you have, you know, in that spawn, because Sancha is on only two damage type. What I'm doing here with these Tessers is I'm going by my low armor resist value and I'm prioritizing that. So right there I had 60% more armor resist, so I'm up to 74. That's actually not far from my Icky Tursa. And then the other thing is, one, again, check your penalty. We're only at 50%, so I can always pull range here. So Concord can do a lot of thermal damage. What people don't realize is that room 
can be uniform damage frequently. And that's usually what will creep up on the Icky Tursas, that EM and, excuse me, Kinetic in that room. But because you're moving, um, marshals really don't do a whole lot. And worst case scenario, an explosive marshal earlier was hitting me for less than the Stormbringer in the room. And I'm definitely not being optimal here. I should I should kill this Tesla early on. Or sorry, the um, Repper. But yeah, while the... Let's kill this guy right now. While the resist look awkward, um, I used my Iggy Tursa for a baseline, which is honestly how I do a lot of things. And against Trig, it's very close. Um, so yeah. And I think for people that want to run a high tier Munin, it, at least in darks, you want to get comfortable running a single repper armor repper. And you can see here, this is a Tessera room. I'm over repping. I went right into the middle of them. And, you know, I took some hits, but I've, I've regen shields in this time. Uh, the other thing that a lot of people don't know is, again, you can always show info on the enemies to see where their resists are at. And because there's no resist penalty in dark, it's very straightforward. But if you have a lot of strike grips, swap to Mjolnir because... Um, and maybe that was and, I, and I'm trying to think back to where I had this comparison in my head maybe it's only compares to like the Serb or the Hawk but EM could be a good choice for them maybe that's a low tier only thing I'll have to go back and look yeah Concord not really worried about it. The main thing I, w I was interested in at first was the full Kiki spawn. And while I was testing, I was very fortunate to get a lot of like Rediva Kiki and Drek Kiki spawns. And again, if you know how darks work, whereas in my Icky Tursa, I spent a lot of spawns sitting still. If you're moving at all, you are likely to reset Kiki Moras or they will reset themselves because they're anchored on another mob. Okay, we're in a speed cloud. We're going to use this to get right up here. Starving, 50%. So I've said this a lot in my... We got ghost things too. I've said this a lot in my icky videos, but in 50%, starvings don't actually shoot you. They will newt you, but they don't shoot you. Not until in that fit I turret disrupt him. Or if I web this guy and go closer than where he wants to set on me. See where our resistor at. 60% in explosive at the moment. Let's turn on our hardener or our repper. And we will kill this Vedmac next. What are we getting hit with? We're getting hit with range. Okay, that's good to know. So if you're fighting right at your missile range, um what you'll typically see is half your missiles hit and half your missiles will fall short. Just the way server, turks, server ticks and how the game calculates missile range. So knowing that my range is just under 10 kilometers, you want to make sure that you, know, you don't suddenly start seeing damage drops that you're not expecting. But here, yeah, he's flying away from me. Let's go closer just in case. And we're in a speed cloud, so let's get out of that. Let's go up here. We're gonna go up over the gate. And you can see our application is pretty solid on these Vedmax. Let's go down here. We're gonna turn that off for a little bit. Because we're so damped here, that's why we're not reaching that Vedmac. But he's reset on us, or he was reset on us. He won't start shooting me till about 11 kilometers. And now that he's in range, we're going to swap back. You can see just how long it takes drones to kill a cache in dark. And like what I'm doing here, this is, I'm being lazy, don't do this. 
So like if we get, you know, another room in and I'm short on time, it, it will absolutely be my fault for me being lazy right here and not just killing this Vedmac. What I want to do is I want to get away from the speed cloud. Let's reload while we do it. Just pull him away a little bit. Where is he at? Where is he at? Where is he at? Go back in. You should get right up on top of him. So yeah, you can see just how much, because we had him in structure and me ignoring him, I have all of his armor back. So as always, don't be lazy. But because these ghostings are range dampening me, let's go right there. That means it should only be range. And we want them to fall behind and hit me with, we want them to activate their micro warp drives. You can see we're only hitting them for 315 at the moment. Let's do some tests here. We got a good hit there because that damn it, because out of range and it's trying to catch back up. So essentially you just need to keep moving. So yeah, I think for me, it's it will come down to what is cheaper because I already had a cheap uh, T4 Serb. And I think right now the Munin will be cheaper and I enjoy armor fits. I wanna drop this web too so we can start pulling range again. And we're slowly getting our missile range back up here. Let's go to a orbit here. Just an easy way to get them to chase us. We want to make sure we're not clipping this cloud too much. But again, you can just see just how little rep you need in darks. Um, so whereas this is like getting mid-grade hydras baked in, the serb is like getting mid-grade crystals baked in. And what I've noticed, you see we, we hit that guy for a lot harder because he's trying to catch up to us. Um, I haven't been testing the Serb, the new Serb. I mean, really, if you flew it before, you, you knew what you know what it's like now. It just has more reps. Um, there we we hit the speed cloud. Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to fit the faction launchers, just mutate the battery. Honestly, and the sack it, sack definitely needed the buff that it got that I got in my opinion. So yeah, again, you can see. As this guy's trying to catch up to us, we're hitting him just as hard as we're hitting a Vedmac, and that's what you're wanting to force. And if you remember Gustav's old micro warp drive fit, um, that's what it relied on, and why when the micro warp drive nerf came out, why that fit was not as popular as it could have been. I mean, you can still run a micro warp drive if you want. Your your tank better be able to support it though. We're probably gonna hit reload here. And again, I took way too long in this room. And that's that's a me thing, that's not this fit thing. Because I haven't heated at all. I basically killed a Vedmac twice. That's okay though. Yeah, turn off tank going in because as I think it was Mac pointed out earlier, I mean Minmatar ships definitely don't have great cap, so don't waste uh, don't waste going into the next room. Okay, Karen. Yeah. It, and the thing with the sacrilege is uh, the thermal hull. So a resist bonus is definitely nice. More resist bonus. We got two... Two newts, two webs, and Karen. Let's get as close as we can here. Not great. Okay, she's active. Let's go. Webs. We can kill these newts last. Scrams don't mean anything to us. We're going to slap these drifters on the way in. We want to make sure we don't let 
Karen slap us when she, I think, wrecked me earlier. Now your values will be somewhat different just based on how your reactive is shifted at the time, but she wrecked me for, I think, 1881 in tier four. I think it was tier four, it might have actually been tier five. And then as soon as I'm up here, I'm gonna swap to her. Just cause I don't wanna get her too far off the gate. And really add an opportunity there to go loot, but after we kill her, we're gonna we're gonna kill these guys as we go loot. And I'm I'm just gonna turn off my repper there. Because the main threat was closing distance. And this will be a good room to get your your drones out. So similar to when I run the Iggy Tursa, I bring the drones out on the battleships. Um, I don't bring them out in the Tesseras rooms just because, I mean, I think everybody here knows if you run Abyssals that Tesseras love to eat drones. Um, and unbonus drones, just you won't, it will just be gone. Um, and Kiki Morris can do something similar. Uh, but for these battleships, I'll bring it out. And here I don't, I don't need to wait. So right now I'm running an empty pod, Nida. So this is, this is everything you're seeing right now. We got some loot in there. So cheap, about 650 mil fit. So again, I mean, people earlier asking about should I run Asclepians? I'm not repping. And look at my tank. Just move. This is a 50% dark. Now, and that's that's where dark can catch you off guard because you'll have rooms like this where, you know, you could almost be just a passive armor munin. Don't do that. Um, Small armor rep munin. Also don't do that. Might be fun though. Uh, but what catches people off guard is you will get rooms that can apply damage to you. It can apply full damage to you and that's what you need to be ready for. And you can see like we're not doing great damage with these drones but they are hitting. And what I should do and I'll probably do it after these runs. The correct play there is as I'm orbiting Karen, drop an MTU and just kill the cache. And then that way we're not going to go back to the cache. I mean, we weren't that far off. And these drifters are pretty good with keeping up with you. And I'm over revving here. As these guys are out of range, let's go ahead and get a reload in. This one's still here, but it's fine. Icon 911, good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, so what that fit command is, is I created a um, Abyssal Resources website. It's technically a web app. Um, but it, right now it's, it's just a fancy web page. I, I used it on that, uh, on that Streamlight app because there's some capabilities I wanna add to it, which will be easier with that. Five starving. So I was actually talking about that earlier. Um, and one of the YouTube clips that I posted of this fit earlier was starving bed max. It wasn't a tier five room, but the thing with darks and starving bed max is knowing that in 50%, they don't shoot you. And in 70%, if you're moving, you're resetting them. So again, you're going to not use your repper and you need to have confidence in your tank to not use your repper. And again, you just see, I hit, I hit the five minute warning and again, I, I killed a Vedmac twice, definitely lost a lot of time there. Let it sit in a speed cloud, lost a lot of time there. I'm not heat, not heating, you know, not using anything else other than essentially straight T2 DPS. Uh, but the short answer to your question is yes, I do believe it will survive. I mean, what I was saying with Icon, I uh, was essentially rather than me sending people to the discord the lurkers discord or my discord or the abyss tracker or workbench i created that website just as an easy way for me to kind of point everyone to one consolidated place for information uh, for this abyss stuff and we put the abyssal lurkers back in there as well which is also in the discord it's just easier to maintain on that website uh, than discord so we're still going on ammo flea block yeah, Flea Block, thank you for the follow. Glad to have you here. Airhead, good to see you. Uh, so for those that just joined, I did just do two runs. And like I said earlier, if tonight you see ads, um, if you see ads when I don't say we're going to do ads, let me know. 
So I'm gonna do a short 30 second break now because I wanna make sure we're not getting ads during the next run. So I will be right back. And Flea Block, I'll answer, your, I'll answer that when I get back. Okay, so that's our short ad test. It took me longer to tell you about it than for the ad to roll. So again, if you get ads when we don't um, expect them, just let me know. So Flea Block, you're asking about the Coercer Navy. Um, I have not tried it on Sissy yet. I have posted a fit for some people, but it's going to have the same problem that standard destroyers have. It's just more expensive now. Make sure I got everything. Yep. Um, if you run an afterburner, you are slow enough to get run down by the Tesseras in tier one. Okay, Deep Watcher. This is actually a room I've been interested to get because I just want to see how our DPS does with it. We're going to get our drones out here onto this biocache immediately. Oh, so yeah, Tesseras run down afterburner destroyers in tier one. Uh, so that's an issue. If you run a micro warp drive on a Navy coercer, um, wrecking shots exist and Drex and Karens could just delete that ship because even though it's a Navy destroyer with more EHP, your armor value, because I remember I looked at this, your armor value, I'm wasting time here. Let's kill these frigs that are on me. Um, the armor value is actually not that much higher than a tier one blitz retribution. Let's get the drones on the deep watcher just because we're going to get our best application there. Uh, so yeah, Afterburner doesn't work, Mike Warp Drive gets you popped, you're still thin. Um, so... Let's see here. Let's kill this Fire Watcher, actually. Lower some of these reps coming out. Caldari Jones, 47438 taken. So, at the time, and I created this soon a while ago, I was watching Indiana Jones and I was making a Rook pilot back when the Rook was a very different ship and it was popular for Solo. Um, so yeah, watching Indiana Jones, I've always been terrible with creating names, so boom, Caldari Jones. And B, you know, J-O-N-E-S was taken. But it's worked out. So one thing I've noticed with Running double webs is you do about twice as much damage against an Ethialtes. And if you get a full Ethialtes spawn, you'll appreciate it then. And again, I'm, I usually run this in Inky Tursus, so I, I play it a little bit differently, but maybe not going on the Deep Watchers first is a mistake, but I want to reduce the remote reps while I can, and then I'll just start on this Deep Watcher here. But again, I haven't touched my Repper. We don't have any Deviant Towers. So this is where, um, well, one, if we knew we weren't going to have any Deviant Towers, then full Hornets would be smart. But if we had this in a first room and we had, you know, full Hornets in a tower, we might lose our drone DPS, which, you know, it's not amazing. But it's about 40 DPS on paper. 506. Yeah, seems about right. Yeah, of the new destroyers, basically what I'm interested in is would be similar to what I thought about the standard destroyers. Uh, viable, but not optimal. And not necessarily viable for low SP, and that's usually the the pilots that are really interested in running standard destroyers in you know tier one and tier zero. You'll be fine. It's when you introduce things like the Tessera that you have issues. 
Tessera or Karen. So we're at just under four minutes here. One more departure to go. And what's nice about Dark is since you don't necessarily have to factor in, you know, especially for a missile ship, any other bonuses, I can just look at my kill time on a Lucid Deep Watcher here, and I know that I need to do that four times in T6. And you can get um, additional NPCs on top of those four Deep Watchers. So obviously if you ran this in Tier 6, you would have nicer ballistic controls. I would probably mutate them as well. I would absolutely heat on the spawn. Usually you don't have as many frigs and cruisers, you'll have some, maybe like three total. But just know that, I mean, deep watcher rooms for a lot of people are a time suck. In darks at least. I mean, I imagine everywhere. Oh, but yeah, so. Standard Destroyer. If a new pilot asks me for a Standard Destroyer, I tell them to go to the Talwar because you can run a micro warp drive and you can get a manageable signature radius on it. With that in mind, you could run the Navy Thrasher, but if the Navy Thrasher was going to be, you know, abyss meta changing for low tier because it's not going to do high tier, then the Saber would have already been a pretty popular ship. So the... Navy Thrasher will do more damage than the Saber. Where are we at? Okay. Definitely manageable on time. In Tier 5, when you get three Deep Watchers, you might, depending on the ad you get, you'll want to take that spawn a little bit more seriously with the DPS. Outgoing DPS. So yeah, Navy Thrasher. Um, Tessera. Tessera in Tier 1. You're going to have to kill that with Barrage. Doable, especially that now that the Navy Thrasher has a falloff bonus. Um, but for a lot of spawns, you're just, yeah, it'll work. It's just not optimal. Same deal. I do want to kill these. Okay. We got a short range tower right on top of us. I want to get these field reppers under it. Uh, I did an overmind earlier with only Nova and that's actually a, that's a misplay because the Hidal Overmind has significantly lower EM resist than the shields. So I would kill the friendly drones around the Overmind first with EM. I would hit Overmind with that EM and then at my natural reload point I would swap to explosive because the armor resist is only uh, it's only 5% better for my UI's lagging there. Only 5% better, or excuse me, 10% difference between EM and explosive for the armor. I, I don't remember exactly how long, but again, if, if that overmine took me too long, I wouldn't be here in this fit. I would just go back to the Ecotrosa. And that will be a strength of the Munin over, say, like the serve is because we can take advantage of the um, double damage bonus that does not prefer a damage type because kinetic is usually not a great damage to deal any of this I'm definitely over repping here these guys will start dropping faster because the teslas are, are dro dropping to this tower there we go but we'll see i, I imagine we'll get an overmind on stream tonight And I've been bad about checking. Always check your weather penalty. Because I know if it's 70%, you can get very close to these Tesseros. What I want, though, is I want them to chase me. And really, we can start going down to the biocache. So this Super Lugat, this is Tier 4. Um, I have, I've run the Munin since yesterday. I've run it in Tier 5 and Tier 6. I've run this in Tier 5. Um, but as I talk through it, because I think, at least to me, what I care about is everybody seeing the application. Um, yeah, I, I think Ascended Succubus is, is in chat talked about that. And I, somebody else brought that up earlier this weekend. And for those who don't, don't know me, what matters to me is providing genuine advice. 
Um, there are people that say they're running tier four solo and, and destroyers, and I have no reason not to believe them, but until I can point people at a reliable reference, I personally won't promote it. Because I don't want to tell it, you know, a pilot that doesn't know better to go, you know, hey, drop 500 mil isk on a jacked on yeet it in a T4, because I guarantee you, even if viable, it will it will die to mistakes. And then the Draugr is just expensive. Oh, but yeah, so going back to Munin and in, in the tiers, uh, tier six, you're going to just put more money on it. You're going to put a little bit more tank on it. And you're going to put implants on and you're going to take the DPS a little bit more seriously. Um, tier five, you could realistically run this fit, overheat on the deep watcher there, maybe pop a pyro, maybe run some 3% implants. Uh, so for me, just seeing, this is actually, I think my first Lashak room. I'm um, just seeing the application. That's what interests me. And I, I think for maybe a few viewers that that's what they're interested in seeing as well. Yeah. And someone had, had asked me about, you know, just kind of taking advantage of, you know, being the first to get stuff out there and ultimately views, it, it does not bother me. One, if I, if I cared about views, I would go back to PVP. But the Abyss is great. Um, it's good for my schedule. So I use the invuln period there because I want I want to get as close as possible before these guys start spreading out. Uh, probably when I have my browser up, but thank you though. I appreciate it. Um, I don't post all my Twitch content onto YouTube. If I have a highlight, I will. Um, the first, because I'm still relatively new at streaming, uh, for anybody that doesn't know how to do this room, I'm prioritizing the renewings because they're repping a good bit. And then I'll kill the blinding next because it's going to pull away from me. And actually, what we'll do is we'll chase this blinding and we'll kill this Lashak on the way. And this is actually a good argument to have Javelin in your hold because if you know that you're going to be you know, outside your missile range for a little bit and you can it makes sense to reload. You could just kill that Lashak from range and go about your business elsewhere. Let's set our drones here. And I'm not going to kill this Tesla because we still need to go back to the biocache. And I overrep that entire spawn. But Flea Block, uh, I appreciate the YouTube stream or the YouTube subscription. We're going to go back. So again, MTU is the play here. And a lot of times, even when I'm only taking the biocache, I'll just drop it up to you because we're going to spend, where's that at? I'm going to spend about 30 seconds going this way and about a, probably another 20 going here. You know, not a big deal for tier four, but that definitely adds up. Now, 2000, we can do one more. I mean, if I have to clear a room with the owner we will but and then you'll you won't really hear me talk about isk per hour yeah yeah um fortunately their range it falls off very steeply and actually on that website i created a tier one specific back at the bottom of the tier one page and it goes over the ranges but the range is easy to remember it's just two kilometers plus six So yeah, I'll, I'll put out information as I have time to really look into it. Um, and so looking at this Munin, I'm pretty comfortable saying, you know, it, obviously it's going to do tier four, pretty comfortable saying it'll do tier five with not much upgrade. If you wanted to take this as is into tier five, I'm confident that there are, are viewers watching right now that could pull it off. Um, if you are newer to the abyss, I would be careful doing that. Okay, we've got Lashak room, first room of the run, 70%, bunch of blindings. So what's going to be different here is since we don't have the invuln period to coast in, all these blindings are going to go max range. Uh, so I like that. It, it's not necessarily 
you know, better. We just got damped. I'm actually going to heat one cycle of the AB here. Yep. It's not better. And it, it's using the same value that you see, like that value there is what I have set up here. And I definitely overheated more than one cycle there. So it's not better. For me, it's just, it's just a habit that I've formed, but you'll see me right click a lot as well. And my range is terrible with all these blindings. But what you can do, like if you're in the situation and you have to chase down blindings like this, kill the Teslas in between. Send drones out for this guy. And again, me not sending drones out is, is bad habits from the Ikitro. So don't, you have the DPS, send it out. this guy next and you can see that me losing lock has thrown me off because we're right on top of a guy here and I'm over repping you you really don't need a lot of rep for the Lashak rooms and if you get a huge starving Lashak spawn it's good to know that and this is where javelin would, would really help let's cut our drones on these big targets where they'll do a little bit better hey Vulcan good to see you Let's go to this guy. And what we're going to essentially do is try to carry these Teslas with us to the biocache. So you can't program a ship to orbit from a custom default distance. Uh, in whole meters, you could. So like I could type that right here. Like that. I did heat for a little bit, so let's go ahead and repair that. Get the webs on the blinding, and we are not doing this room efficiently right now. After this set, I will bring an MTU. I mean, it's it's still in line, but it's an easy optimization to make. So yeah, you can do that with all of the commands. It's just the radio menu, and actually when I I did a new tune recently and the radio menu, because I'm all I'm doing for those who don't know is I'm holding down left click and it's bringing up a menu. There's actually more commands here too. Um, there, you don't get the radio menu right at the start of the game and it was kind of frustrating. But I also have all of my keys rebound and I just do most of my movement with the mouse. So it's just, it's a very natural thing for me to do. Hello Conan, I'm glad you're here. Hope you're having a good night. I think I was talking to you on YouTube earlier. Can't remember. I could repair my afterburner here. Yeah, you can't set it in radio, but I can, what I set in as my default, I can use in the radio. We got Sentinels. Good deal. Glad to have you here. So Preservers will heal. We got a couple new, it's not a big deal. Uh, is it easy to plex an account doing Abyssals? You could do it um, because low tier can be very profitable. For me, it would not be enjoyable. If I really wanted to plex an account, I would hit a cheap ship and I would do exploration. And what really you could do is you could alternate between low tier frigate abyss, as long as you're not losing ships, and exploration. Because as long as you, so don't lose ships in, in low tier frigate stuff, one. And if you're comfortable exploring wormholes, um, taking advantage of event, event sites, so you'd have to time it right. And just going to null sec and low sec, you can make a lot of money doing exploration and you're out in the game. So if I were to ever, you know, create an account with the intent to plex it, that I would do that. And when I created a hardcore tune not too long ago, that's 
uh, more or less what I did. Yeah, yeah. That's what I would do. Just because low tier, I mean, while you're learning, I, I know that there's a lot going on, but as you get comfortable in it, it's kind of the same. And it gets old. I think the Abyss is a great iteration on EVE PvE, but it is still EVE PvE. If you have the option and can afford to pay for Omega, for me that is always the best way to go. I know that's not an option for everybody. We all come from very different backgrounds and have very different circumstances, but um, if you can, that, that's what I would recommend. Just because it can turn Eve very much into a job. And even for me, um, again, I don't talk about ISK per hour a lot because if I start distilling the, ga the game down into ISK efficiency, it, it very quickly, um, I lose interest. Yeah, I mean, you could do it. You could definitely do it. You would need the time to do it, though. But you can also, I mean, you can have a lot of fun as an alpha. You can, as far as free trials go, you can do a lot in the game. Yeah, but some of the some of that low tier frigate stuff can do a run in about for an alpha, five or six minutes is realistic. For an alpha, unfortunately, some of the better ships will be the worm, which is a very expensive ship to run for tier one compared to what omegas can get away with. My application here is not great at the moment. Again, same deal. I want these guys to chase me because my application will go up significantly. So you, you saw I hit that guy for almost 900 at first, and then I hit him for about 350. Then we're going to go back to the gate because we definitely don't want to kill the last guy and have to travel 20 kilometers. And I'm over-repping. And what we do when we get to the gate, I'll deactivate this, and we will repair this. And by the time we get to the next room, since my skills are, are good for it, that will be good to go. And be careful overheating your rep and not paying attention, because you can very easily burn out your mid slots when you overheat a rep, or your um, booster. Afterburner, that is. Okay, do we have no no deviant tower? Okay. Let's go here. Needlejack exploration now. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a good way of going about it. Let's kill this guy. Now the trick with Tesla's, if you don't know, I'm looking for a blue cloud. Okay, so we are essentially we're gonna do this room and have no help for our missiles. Same deal, we want these guys to chase us. So we're going to go up to the biocache. Let's unlock one of these targets. We want to kill this guy as he comes in. So Tesla rooms, especially in darks, will catch people off guard because you go from no damage to, you know, hull alarm. And it's basically because you can think about it as a small range blender. Uh, they, especially with the dark penalty at 70%, they can't project well, but project well. But if they set up in their orbit, they will eat you. Especially in a frigate. So, again, I want them to chase me. I don't want to get out of range of them, especially because we know that, or maybe you don't know, rogue drones have a thing in the abyss where when you kill one, they frequently will stop moving. Like right here. We're going to stop our ship because I want to kill some of these guys as they're slow. So great opportunity to just slap stuff. And then they moved again. So we'll go back to what we were doing. So you can see, to me, this ship is viable. It will not beat my Icky Tursa. And what I will say from running this single bat fit is I am definitely, I mean, I knew when I built it, but running the double bat bat Icky Tursa in tier four is overkill. Now, the difference is, is, you know, when I run the double bat version, I basically don't have to pay attention to newts, but 
what else are you doing in the room? Do you really need to ignore newts? And a lot, especially in darks, since turrets are so nerfed, um, you usually have some wiggle room on the other E War. And one of the reasons why I have velocity listed here is so I can see when these guys are slowing down. So yeah, this won't be as efficient as the Dark Icky Tursa, and it, it shouldn't be, it's it's not as expensive. I mean, this fit alone, or rather this fit, costs not that much more than an Icky Tursa hull. But, you know, not that Isk is necessarily a balancing factor in the game. Um, but this will have slower rooms. But I mean, that, that was a full frig room and it was no issue. Okay, nice. Yeah. Alpha is a great way to get into the game, or if you just don't have the time to justify Omega. But if you want to really play, I would I would go Omega. So yeah, that was a set of four. Um, for those who have not watched me before, I again, I don't talk about Isk Royale, I talk about Isk per set, and that's because as I go up in tier, I will roll boosters. Um, yeah, I think they were at 700,000 earlier. Um and I bought a few. I bought a lot. Um, no, it was earlier today. I bought. I bought a good bit because they had gone up to almost six hundred thousand. And because I like to run T4 Dark a lot, I I bought a number of them. But I, I already had a lot. And really, the stockpile that I'm using now is still from when it was like three to four hundred thousand. So yeah, I don't talk about Isk Brow. I talk about Isk Reset because I care about how many runs I can get in on a set of boosters. Um, these are cheap boosters and you know that was four in just a, under an hour um, because if you have to roll those consumables and you are using boosters that have side effects that's ultimately what matters i i could you know loot more in the room but if i lose an extra run on my set of boosters it's just a loss to me it's a loss and again i care about runs completed i don't care about the loot is great but so let's see Hey, Mr. Unlucky, good to see you. Thank you for the sub. Glad to have you back around. So this was, let's do this. Sorry if you can hear my uh, baby monitor there. So yeah, that was four runs for 130 mil. Uh, not terrible. But again, in that same amount of time, I can guarantee you that a Nikki Teresa can do a five runs. And we are going to burn through a lot of missiles. So wherever you set up your base of operations for your Munin, bring a lot of missiles. I came here with a stack of 10,000 each. And again, I, you can see I haven't used Mjolnir at all, but I'm almost halfway through on the uh, Nova. So let's do this. So yeah, that, that, that link, Nyak, yeah, Nyok. N-Y-A-O-K-C. Uh, first, thanks for stopping by, but that fit website is just a place that I put together that consolidates a lot of, one, a lot of the questions that I answer throughout a stream and throughout the day, but it's also an easy way for me to showcase the other fits I'm using rather than pointing people at five different uh, websites. Uh, yeah, the new the new Munin is very, pretty strong. Uh, Mr. Unlucky, if, for comparison, it's like having mid-grade hydras in your head. Gobbledygoo Gaming, thank you for the follow. Glad to have you here. Um, and I know you've seen my Icky Tursa in action a little bit. Tank-wise, it's very similar um, to my Icky Tursa tank. You could run a shield tank, and I originally my first thought was to run the 
large Ansel version of the fit, but your shield buffer is very thin. So everything you're seeing on the fit for these runs is right here. You know, no implants, you don't even need these boosters. I wasn't using boosters in tier five. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty cheap fit, and it could be cheaper. But for, I mean, we have other stuff in our hold now, which is bringing this price up, but this fits only 650. Oh yeah, so since we're in between sets, let me do a short, uh, I'm gonna do a two minute break this time, just to get more water and stretch and make sure that my daughter's okay, cause she's, she is sick this week, but two minute break, I will run ads. And again, if you see ads outside of this break, just let me know and I'll continue to work on, you know, how we can make sure that viewers are not seeing ads outside of these breaks. So two minutes, be right back. Okay, we're back. I do appreciate everybody who stuck around. Kiddo's doing okay. Like I said, she just isn't feeling well. So when she wakes up, she remembers that she doesn't feel well and she lets us know. Uh, so yeah, the so Mr. Unlucky, the new ham or the new Munin is very similar to the ham Loki without bonus webs. Uh, I went back through cruiser platforms to see which got explosion velocity bonuses and the Loki was the only one. Um, so that's probably the the example that you have the most familiarity with. I did see somebody streaming a Rapid Light Loki again the other day in PvP. Um, it's still a great you know great ship for Rapid Light, but I personally would not do that. I would just do hams. And then for a solo pilot, your ham range is, still goes out essentially two point range for most situations. I mean, 17 kilometers is is obviously less than 24, but you can. Increase that range if you really need to. Uh, but yeah, and of course, 17 kilometers puts you close to, it uh, puts you within heated um, Navy stasis web range. Your max set for the RD platform, regular hack, yeah, yeah. I mean, the dark worked, it just wasn't ideal. The Serb worked, but it was ludicrous price. And one thing that I've been looking at is I know for a long time people talked about rigor, so medium rigor rigs. So missile SIG radius rigs were better than the missile explosion velocity rigs, which are flares. But if that's the case, why is everybody, you know, super excited about hydras? Because two T2 flares is better than hydras. And if that's what makes the fit, then, you know, why were we not running flares all along? Now, obviously, you don't, you can do a lot to your tank on a Serb in those rig slots, but I just think there might be some room for growth in how we run these missile fits. 
But for now, I'll run this Munin. Um, I don't have much reason to run the Serb in Dark with this Munin. I'll probably still occasionally run it. Mechanically, it will be very similar. Um, for me, the Serb now belongs in Exotics, as long as you find a tank that you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah. And the thing, the thing with Hams is if you can get webs on your fit, then Hams are great. Um, if you can't do anything fitting or application-wise, then I would go Heavy Missiles. And that's a whole different rabbit hole we could go down. So yeah, super cheap fit. You could easily take this fit into tier 5. I'm just doing tier 4 on stream because to go up in tier, all you're doing is you're adding disc. You're going to take the tank more seriously and you're going to put you know, better ballistic controls on here. And I'm all about, you know, cheap fits are great, but spend the money when it makes sense. Like with my Dark Icky Tursa, um, which is also on that website, you know, people talk to me about having a very nice smart bomb on that fit, even on the tier four fit, but I know that if I put that money in there, it's not a straight, you know, oh, I'm gonna get so much more DPS out of it. it significantly increases the efficiency. You can run the cheap version and it's just fine and it will clear still faster than this fit on average. But if you enjoy fit a lot it, and you have the ISK, why not? So yeah, let's do another set here. We'll roll we'll double synth again. You can, you can see that the tank has been overkill. But I'm also making a point to not run the tank often just to get the most out of our cap. Mr. Unlucky, how's a, these are tier four. Uh, how's your kiddo doing? Because here in the States, there's a, a virus that's going around that's hitting a lot of kids. I actually have a, a co-worker whose kid's in the hospital right now with it. And that's why we're really keeping an eye on our daughter to see what's going on. And I have it as well. I'm just tired and occasionally I'll cough. Uh, okay, okay. Glad to hear he's great though. So when you have tesser rooms, one, again, check your weather bonus and prioritize based on what your lowest resists are. And especially with this fit, you have no reason to go up close. Use your missile range. I set my orbit to 7,500 meters, but we could go further just because I know with agility being what it is, I can very easily dip out of 14 kilometers and it's just annoying to get the webs back on. Yeah. Glad to hear he's doing great. Our kiddo is also great. And I would say if you didn't know her, you wouldn't be able to tell that she's sick. You, you just can look at her and, and see that she's not 100%. And she is quickly becoming more mobile. I think she will walk before she crawls. But yeah, what's interesting is these tesseras, we hit a tessera for about as hard as we hit a assignable. Which is interesting because obviously one's a cruiser and one's a battle cruiser. Yeah, yeah. Ruined your back. Ruined your back, interesting. Oh, because you're sitting at home all day? Yeah, I'm not really saying much about this room. It's just don't let these guys get run on top of you. In 70%, it's in my icky terse, I could sit still in this room. Um, ah, yeah, me too, me too. I want to ultimately, I want to go to this cache. I don't want to be all the way out here when this last guy dies. Uh, Mr. Unlucky, the other thing that you'll probably notice with the Munin is without any mods, the ham range is, I mean, I mentioned it, but it might be lower than missile boats that you're used to. Again, for solo stuff, more than, more than fine. I don't think I would take the Munin outside of darks though, or if I do, I would consider a missile enhancer at least. I want some more range. You're gonna be chasing a lot. And if you mutate anything on this fit, I would go for 
longer range on the whips. I mean, obviously, you can get... I can't remember if you can mutate so that it has a higher penalty. If you can hear the baby monitor, just let me know. Yeah, all good. I mean, you do you do a good bit of PVE. You, you like to be out in the world, though, with multiple accounts, so it's good. Ooh, wow. Yeah, so I originally got, I mean, I tried the Abyss when it first came out. Um, and then Mr. Unlucky, I, I know that when I, when I first started talking to you was around when the ESS came out. Um, after I got the Rook stuff out of my system, Rook stuff out of my system, I went to the VEDMAC and I don't, I don't do a lot of industry for profit, but I figured if I'm gonna run this ship a lot and I did, it's a good way for me. So we have a lot of starving damn fix here. Let's take our, let's take this seriously. Um, so I turned off my tank. Um, so I started doing Abyss to offset my PVP cost for a bit that was about 800 mil at the time. Um, and then I got hooked. And then I started the, I was looking back the, the other week. My first Dark Icky vids were in December. So not that long after I was doing that ESS stuff. Um, and then I just kind of stuck around and I mean the Abyssal Lurkers community is, is a great community and is really um, that's why I've, I'm still around in the game right now so skill plans I don't have it on the website but if you go into Lurkers in game I have skill plans for the Kestrel and the Hookville Again, I turned off my Repper. This is a decent bit of new pressure, but you can see we have yet to hit shields, and this is an armor fit. E Phoenix, good to have you here. So that website that that link took you to is is a place that I just kind of dropped my Abyssal information, and we put the Abyssal Lurkers back there as well, because it can be difficult to share a lot of information in Discord. And so when I go add questions now, if I wanted to get everything in line, I would have to modify all the messages. First time you met Hyperion 1v1? I don't think so. I think we were essentially doing the exact same thing on that night because it was the first night that BSS was out. Um, I, you were in a, in a Hyperion and I think I was roaming in the Rogue at the time. Zenith team, I appreciate the follow. And again, bad habits from the from the Ikitor, so I'm not locking targets as I clear these guys out. And again, the trick with frigates is to get them to chase you, because there we had a hit for 535, but once he lights his micro warp drive, it will go up. It should go up. Yeah, we hit him for a lot harder there. Granted, there was you know a difference in resist, but it's not that big of a difference. We're going to go to the biocache now. I appreciate it. Yeah, chill is kind of if I have a goal for a stream, it, it's chill. And I imagine most of you do know. Let's make sure I don't kill myself doing this. Yeah, so if, if you don't know, I imagine most of you do, Mr. Unlucky is an excellent streamer, and I actually don't spend a lot of time watching games on Twitch. If I have the time to hang out, I probably have the time to play. Um, but Mr. Unlucky is one of the few streamers that I will make time or find, a, find screen space to be able to watch him. So he's been doing a lot of Nullsec PvP lately, and he does a lot of really a variety of PvE um, activities whereas my PvE is largely just the Abyss I do some other things but not things that I'm streaming at the moment yeah, yeah. and he's, he's a funny guy I would I would say we have very different personalities maybe I mean I could absolutely enjoy beer with you I mean that's the thing about Eve is we're all playing a game that 
is fairly unique, I imagine that most E players could sit down and enjoy a beer together. And again, as long as I don't mess around here, we're going to kill this room and not even go into armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I will take credit for Mr. Unlucky's music, though. He was watching my stream, and, and uh, I think I even set up a command for this. Yeah, there you go. Good chill music, and you can filter um, based on a lot of settings, which is nice. Let's see what we're doing on my playlist. I was trying to add songs earlier. Pretty close to the bottom. So let's pay attention to what we're doing here. I think you'll go back to YouTube. Yeah. This is actually the first Sancho room I've had in this fit. So check this out. We've got uniform resist on the REH. We're at 9583 here. Our resists are going to do just fine in this room. Three knights, one smith. Yeah, I mean, YouTube is, is a decent option. I liked Artlist mainly when I was doing a lot more YouTube content because I could just kind of casually browse. I'm going to go for a close orbit on these knights because our traction tracking is actually poor. Um, poor. I'm trying to say too many things at once. Yeah, I could just listen kind of like on Spotify and, and star a song. And then when I had Eve content that lined up, I would... Uh, download it and use it. So this is actually a misplay. Let's, after I kill this knight, I'm going to be a little bit, you know, less efficient for 10 seconds, but EM is the play, especially on knights. I'm gonna show you here. It's a little bit closer on the frigates, but so yeah, we've got three knights. We're at 96.86 on our rep. Yep, and we're full ramp on the REH and I have not turned on my Ripper yet. I'm going to turn on my Ripper just because, you know, let's not do dumb things. But their tracking is poor. They're in 70%. You really don't need a lot of reps. And I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream, I would say for people who want to take this ship into high tier dark, that will be the catch, is, is becoming comfortable with a single armor Ripper. I promise you that it works. I literally, in most spawns, my AK Terrace says sit still. Um, you just need to take the time to learn the spawns and know what you can get away with. And know when you need to take a room seriously. Kid was upset. Yeah. I mean, this is probably best case scenario for our resists. A Sanchez spawn will, will make a Iki Tursa tank move. And on like these hunters, I said the resists are a little bit lower, but still, if, if you stick on explosive, that's a good bit more damage that you lose. I'm not being efficient here doing this. We want them to chase me. And a lot of these bad habits you see is from me running the Dark Icky Tursa. And I want to say armor buffer wise, this is close to half what the Icky Tursa has. I'll have to go back and check. but Because the Trig ships have most of their EHP or raw HP in armor. If you haven't seen the air so you can just imagine how, how little that tank would be moving. The other thing with Sanchez is they're slow. So if you're not webbed and you start after running away from them, they're gonna you're gonna outrun them. So I will just kind of pulse my afterburner so that they're always chasing me, but I'm kind of at the edge of my web range. And you'll also see that we definitely have time to loot more. I just um, loot is nice and re rewards for your con for your time is nice but I 
am doing this because I want runs completed and I want to get through more runs and see more spawns. And that's true for all of my fits. But for those who are more interested in pulling more loot out of their tier, then you know, use the MTU. You have short range, so you could either send the drones out or you could do javelin hams, which I wouldn't do. I would just send the drones. Your drone range is not great though, but you can plan around it and definitely get more loot out of these runs. Yeah, 57. And I run the, you know, normally you want to use up all the bandwidth in your drone bay by having the highest number of drones in that bandwidth. I'm using the Navy Vespas because I know that I can keep Navy Vespas alive under a tower, a deviant tower in the abyss. And then that poor Hornet is kind of just a sacrifice because it will be the first thing that dies. Sorry, the Phoenix, I missed your comment about fitting your CTM unit. Yeah, if you have a bunch of munins laying around, be good, good activity for it. Again, this is a super cheap fit. If you wanted to put more money into it, and like if you go to tier five, I think if you have a billion esque T5 fit, that's a very reasonable tier five fit. Got a bunch of Lancers, no newts. We're in a 50%, so we can just run our tank here. I'm gonna kill the Confusers first, and then I'm gonna start working on the Lancers. Spearfisher Scram. These the Illuminators, target paint, we're not, a, not really worried about them. All right, good to see you. Yeah, it is getting late there. Let's lock this guy up. We'll just kill who's close at the moment. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, the last time I typed out the shout out command, because I don't have anything fancy set up for it, I definitely put my hawk at point blank range on a Tessera and almost died for it. So that was my comment earlier about trying not to kill myself doing it. Yeah, Mr. Unlucky, if you haven't checked him out and followed him, good person to uh, stream. And he's on my recommended list as well. So yeah, Ephialtes, this is actually the room where I want dual webs because I noticed that if I run dual webs, I'm, I do about twice as much damage. And there's nothing, you know, super fancy about how we're going to do this room. It's just a lot of EHP. I, and if you run Abyssals at all, I, I imagine you all know that Ephialti's room is just a time suck. So we want to kill them. We want to make sure we're not too far off the gate when the last one dies. We're getting pretty close to the end of our playlist. Let's go back up to the top and stop this song. These first two songs I found within the last like few days, so they're pretty neat. Surprisingly, this does not have an instrumental only version though on that site. A lot of times they do. And yeah, the lyrics are actually not bad. Lots of scrams. And this is a misplay. I, I should have killed that confuser. So again, usually these disruptors, every, every time that I look, disruptors are one or the other. You're either getting hit with range or application disruption. Uh, so figure out if you need to clear some out. He's hitting me with range at the moment. And you can also control click on these icons down here to target back. And this cloud here is a shield penalty cloud. And that is another nice thing about running armor fits in the abyss is you have one less cloud to worry about. So a little bit less RNG you have to deal with because you could absolutely start in one of these clouds. I mean, to start in a cloud in a bad spawn, that a lot of things have to line up for that. And it would have to be the first room. Um, and a lot of spawns would also have to be the enemies are in a speed cloud to be right on top of you in time. Um, because for the second and third room, you can use the invuln period to get out of that position. I'm not a 
So yeah, I've been very impressed with how this fit worked out. Um, originally I was thinking I would do shield, but or even a weird dual tank setup. But the fact that I can make dual webs work at all, and again, this is really true for any ham setup. Yes, the hydras exist, and there's different ways to improve your missile application, but if you can get two webs to work, one, it's um, cheap. Two, there's, you're never going to be applying full, so really ask yourself, what else are you going to put in these meds? And I was having that conversation earlier because I figured, you know, I could do like my tier four dark icky turret where I put a turret disruptor in there, but I think I just get more value out of the webs. Hey, Darabus, good to see you. Already had a turbo Karen tonight. Oh, yeah. Karen in a speed cloud. I actually put my Iki Tursa back when it was still my Corrupt Drive fit way out of bounds with a speed cloud and a Karen. And they were all just kind of waiting at the edge, waiting to receive me. So I think this was our first room. Has to be. So we're still fine on time, but you can see it like. This is just a straightforward, arguably kind of boring room where it's just a lot of damage I gotta do. And I've left damage on the table, I should have brought my drones out. Again, they're not gonna do great damage. You don't wanna take a primary drone boat or a boat that has drones as primary weapon system. You don't wanna do that in the darks, but it is damage. I'm gonna stop my reps now so that I can start regening cap as I go into the next room. And I did exactly what I said I shouldn't do. And I'm going to be 40 kilometers off the gate by the time this dies. guy dies. How you doing tonight, Derivus? I think you were around last stream, too. This is a good time to overheat your prop mod. I'm not going to do it here, but... Yeah. We're taking way too long. We essentially just added close to a minute. Yeah. Doing well, doing well. Like I said, my uh, I've been sick and my daughter's sick. Uh, so if, if you again, if you hear the baby monitor, just let me know and I'll, I'll turn my gain down a little bit. I'm not ignoring it. My wife is on baby duty right now. Um, we're good. I've I've enjoyed the changes for the abyss. I haven't actually run a whole lot. This this is the most abyss I've done all week uh, because I, I created that website and my free time is you know I'm always in lurkers chat answering questions and whatnot, but uh, the other free time that I have goes into that website, which I rebuilt the other morning, so uh, people can direct the link in it now. Okay, using the invul period to just get up here onto Karen before she really gets too far away. This is a lot of confusers. We're going to have to kill them. What's our range at? Yeah, 11 kilometers. I ideally would still get to Karen first, though. In theory, yeah. And so I'm, I'm not going to put, and someone talked, asked me about this, I'm not going to put ads on that website because I'm, I'm not worried about generating revenue. And I actually don't know if I can put ads on a Streamlit app. Maybe. Um, my goal is just for a lot of the questions that we have to answer, not only me reference it, but other people knowing that they can just point at this link. And now since you can directly point at the fact or you can directly point at the starter crits page or the tier one frigates page, it just, um, people can go there and read it. And I'm, I'll still answer questions, but if it's something that I've taken the time to write down, um, I'm gonna point there first. And again, it's not for revenue. I'm not, and I'm not worried about views, so just a, place that I'm going to keep dumping information that if I'm not around, people can reference it. And again, I haven't been running my, ta my tank and you can see just how little damage we're taking. I'm going to bounce off this arc. No, no. Clipped it. And we're in a blue cloud. Let's get the drones out. Let's not be lazy. Should make a command for that that slaps me for not having drones out. I would say the new people that join Lurkers have been using the website. When I rebuilt it the other day, I, I somehow broke the ability for me to see, so we bounced there and we took a hit. When that happens, I mean, focus up and I double-clicked to make sure I got away from that piece of architecture. 
world architecture. Karen's going to die soon, though. We're just going to take all these confusers back to the gate. We're going to go back to the bioadaptive cache. Actually, let's do this. I'm going to drop our MTU. It's our lock range out. There we go. Send our drones to the cache. And this will just be kind of our base of operations while we get that bio cache here. Yeah, so, and you, you can absolutely say, and one, I'm not a coder. I'm an amateur coder on the best of days. Um, so what that site is and what Streamlit is, uh, it was initially designed for machine learning scientists that don't know how to code, which is not a problem that I can imagine existed until I heard about that. Uh, so what it does, it's a Python script. And anytime you touch anything, it runs that Python script. And when you see the different pages, I've essentially locked it in a loop um, for that page. And I mean, I, I can definitely just do something like on Squarespace. And eventually I might get to a point where that makes more sense. But there are some other things that I want to add to that website that I can very easily do in Streamlit. Like I have that missile damage calculator there. That was just a straight copy and paste from a script that I had. Um, and there's something I want to do with some combat logs. Uh, so for example, talking about missile application, we know that, or not we know, but with some people that I've talked to, there is a discrepancy in what we should expect on say a Damovic hit with a missile boat in the abyss and what we're seeing. And rather than, because right now what I do is I use that calculator and I'll have a video clip. And I'm essentially stop watching that video clip and I'm dropping the stats in. But what I could do is parse combat logs and take average hits based on what I'm firing and what I'm firing against. <laughs> I appreciate it. I shoot my drones. Yeah, on bonus drones really don't I mean, you can see that even that Vespa did okay. We're only 13 off the gate. Let's just do our normal orbit here where we at time-wise. Again, all these FELTs, it just, it's just a time suck. And I also had excellent times here to use heat. So I, again, I'm leaving damage on the table. So I just got a notification saying that ads might be popping up. So if anybody is seeing ads like right now, just let me know if you don't mind, because again, I would much rather us, cause we're about to go into our last room and then we'll have a, a natural break. I would much rather if we, if we have to see ads, we'll see it then. Okay. Last room. Okay. Good deal. I think what it might be is um, people that would join right when I would take my longer break when I'm doing the Icky Tours. I, th I think they're seeing those ads. So Vila rooms, especially in darks, they really don't do a lot of damage. And again, I'm going to get better about not turning my tank on automatically because I don't need it. And my uniform EHP per second on this right now Again, no implants, just the double synth is 350, but that can be deceptive. And, and what I usually look at when I'm building a dark fit is what is my EHP per second versus trigs? Because in a 50% full kicky room, if you get very, really locked down, you can take some damage. You just need to know how to manipulate how those kickies are flying and you can reset them and it just goes back to no damage. We got here. We got a ghosting. That ghosting is hitting me with range. These damn fix will stay with me though. Let's hit him next, anyways. We don't have any webs on me. Yeah, nothing else really matters here. Sometimes I accidentally reload stream. I got the window highlighted. Use the shortcut to reload. Interesting. So I have pre-roll turned off, at least I thought I did. 
So amateur coder on the best of days, amateur streamer every day. We'll get there though. And and that's mainly it is is I'm I'm trying to figure out what that pattern is so that people are hanging out, you know, aren't getting the worst timing possible for ads. So I'm just gonna set up an orbit around the gate, let these guys chase me. If you don't know, you don't have to kill these drones, you just have to kill their owners. Like right here, there's, I could get that cash. I could just drop an M2 here. Yeah, make sure I got my pack run. Pretty straightforward bit. It's straightforward for me at least, but I, I've put a lot of time into darks and someone commented that on that earlier that, you know, you really like darks and for me, if, if you enjoy brawling, I um, mean, well, one, if you don't enjoy drone ships, uh, it just plays into a lot of things that I enjoy. Interesting. It could be. You might have some restrictions on what you're allowed to see in a certain block of time. Yeah, so uh, I caught it earlier today. Dark T4 Dark was going up, so I, I bought a good number. And I'm, I'm not necessarily going to turn around and flip those. I'm going to use them. Because when I designed the T6 Icky Tursa, uh, you know, if you remember back then, tier six dark was like 10 to 15 mil. And 25, if, if dark filaments, T6 dark filaments hit 20 mil, I'll buy every one at 20 mil. I mean, I say that I have plenty and I don't really have the time to run tier six a lot. Again. I'm not doing anything crazy. It's a slower run for me, but we still have plenty of time. Yeah, I think they were 700 last I checked, which is still, you know, Firestorm is cheap. I think Dark Tier 4 is a little bit more approachable. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that was my comment in the lurkers discord earlier was someone was asking you know well what's better what's is it the serve the sack or the mutant and really it's they're all excellent it, for me i would run the serb in exotic only i would find a tank you're comfortable with and run it there i would run the sack i mean electrical would be a good choice i know they're expensive um sack is just good all around i would not run the sack in dark i would run the mutant in dark um, i think running the mutant outside of dark would be painful if you don't address the missile range. Now I will say that you have flexibility in this, but you can absolutely run one web. Your FELT rooms will be slower, so you need to consider that, but you could get some range on here. And like right here, if you had implants, you could get rig slots back. Yeah, missile wise, yep, doing fine. Yeah, Stormbringer, good ship. Definitely don't put it in dark, not tier four and above. Yeah, docking animation, it's it's interesting. The first thing that stood out to me is when you jump in or when you dock, your thrusters look like you're still going forward. But I don't spend a lot of time in, in player structures lately, so I actually don't see it a whole lot. I do notice that when I get into a station, I'm looking straight up at my ship pretty often. Triple Vedmac, two ghosting, Velas again. We got time, let's go to this blue cloud. So yeah, Stormbringer is definitely I mean, if I wanted to run, so if filament prices changed and say exotic or even electrical took a dip, I mean, I, I might consider the Stormbringer, but, and this is no comment on you, Phantom, I just, I don't enjoy it. Um, and I know there's definitely more nuance there that I'm giving it credit for as far as positioning and which target to hit. But when I was running it, I just, I wasn't having fun. But same reason I don't run the the Giel and the Ishtar, I just, I don't have fun in it. But that's what's nice about EVE is there's options for everybody. Where are we at? We're getting hit with range again. Let's kill these ghostings. I'm over repping here, but we don't have any cap pressure. We're fine. So we can kill these ghostings, or rather we can kill these Damavix while we're in this cloud. And then as we go loot, we can kill the Bedmac. Yeah, so from my experience in tier four dark, 
I'm, I'm, I imagine you know this. You can heat the gun the entire time and the overmine, the tier four overmine is still just takes way too long. But again, if, if a ship works outside of darks and if, you know, the limiting factor isn't cost, then it will be faster than darks. The exception being, you know, firestorms, maybe gamma. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just not fun for me because I hit that overmine and I'm like, well, I can sit here. I, I, I did stay there because I wanted to see how well the heat was. And I had heard that the heat on that gun was excellent. Um, but I could go make a sandwich in that time. And that's just, that's not fun for me. Let's do pop the cache here. Then we'll swap to this VEDMAC. Again, harrowing VEDMACs can be kind of crazy in their orbit. I just want to make sure we're in range. So, on that overmind, I sat there and I let that heat go to, I think, 96 or 98, which, you know, if you're, you get an overmind on live, it might be worth doing that. And it did seem pretty consistent that each tick was 2%. Um, and then I would just repair going into the next room. But if you did that and you needed to repair going into the next room and that room was an overmind, I mean, that's, you potentially just died right there. And you can run definitely in, you can run a relatively cheap fit. I just, it wouldn't be fun for me. And mechanically, it's not fun for me. I have my gimmicky AOE ship. That's the Icky Tursa. And an Overmind is a very simple room for it. Again, don't do what I'm doing here. I'm wasting 30 seconds. and turn off your tank when you don't need it. Yeah, for sure. And like, this is only 650 mil, but I, I honestly think one bill for T4 is is reasonable, especially for all the icky Tursa pilots out there. I mean, you're not really gonna put an icky together for less than a bill. And if you do, I mean, that's not being fair to the hull. Similar to the Marauder, it, it responds very well to some bling. Um, but a lot of higher skilled pilots you can put cheap hacks through tier four, but those pilots, if you just put a little bit of isk into it, you would stomp that tier four. It just depends on what you want. And for me, if, if I want a challenge in a ship, I will take a cheaper ship into a lower tier, like a caracal, caracal into tier two and tier three. It will be a similar experience. I don't I don't need to spend 20 minutes in a room or in a run to have have a challenge, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's how I am. I mean, I definitely make competitive ISK here, um, even sub or biocache only, but I care about runs completed. And for those who have hung out this entire time, first of all, thank you. I know I repeat myself a lot, but um, do turn your tank on when you go into a room, though, because I'm going to pay for this. Are we at 50%? So when you get ramped on by triggs pick a direction and fly let's do some heat here yeah and i might pay for no we might be okay two webs and that's the thing with harrowing bed max is they sit on top of you because they're micro warp drive let's heat our weapon as well let's get our guns out and again I'm, I'm in this position because i wasn't paying attention and let my tank go to half but again single repper in the lows, you can heat this for a while. Let's turn heat off on our guns. Let's not make two major mistakes here. Back here, we can turn heat off on the tank now, and we're fine. Let's drop the webs. Yeah. And, and again, I think there is, there's definitely times where it makes sense to spend the ISK, tier six being one of them. Because it, again, if you, can, if you can run tier six in a super cheap fit, then a super blingy fit will just trivialize it. Now there are opportunities like the cheap Vaga out there, and I think that is an excellent ship if you want, you know, a different experience. So because I'm webbed, I'm not getting great application on these standard picks at the moment. 
Let's do this. We're going to turn my tank off. Let's repair here. Orbit the gate. We actually don't have any heat damage on the tank, so we don't have to turn it off if we don't want to. Windmill is Tristan, yeah. Tier 3 Vexer, strong ship. Uh, of the Tech 1 cruisers, uh, the Arbitrator, I'm, I'm a big fan of that one. And the dual tank Caracal could be interesting. Maybe if I put flares on the Caracal, I would feel, feel differently about needing two webs. And I actually will check that down when I think about it. Because I'd, um, I, I put a lot of time into starter fits. And right now, I know that a lot of people like to run Caracals when they first get into the game or into the Abyss. And it just, it's not a as easy of a fit as it once was. And maybe I just hate rapid lights that much in PvE. But really for me, it's if I give a, a new pilot, especially a ship that they can do everything right and still lose it, um, yeah, lose it, I, I feel guilty for that because I know better. And, and people don't have to believe me on certain things, but new pilots can absolutely lose rapid light caracals, even in tier one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it is a great ship. It is, um, but you can put heavy missiles on it. And what's funny is, so in tier one, if you have tech two rapid lights, which a lot of new pilots don't, then you can make those rapid lights work most of the time. Um, if you know what you're doing, like if if you take your time and you're like, oh, you know, big deal. I'm not I'm not dying. Then you'll you'll eat that timer, depending on what you get. Um, but you can make a ham caracal work in tier one for a lot lower skill points. Let's do turn off our tank. Let's repair this as we go into the next room. So it takes about 10 seconds to go to the next room and that's a good bit of time that we can repair stuff. That's gonna almost completely repair our guns. Passive Osprey Navy. It's boring, boring, boring. Marshal room, yep, exactly. I mean, I suggest an, an armor that we got here. Just drifters, pretty straightforward room. We got about 11 minutes to do it straightforward. Yeah, and that's the thing with the, all the T1 cruisers is you'll go the entire time and it's like, yeah, well, this is nothing. And then suddenly you just die. Let's turn off our rep again. Passive Osprey Navy. So of the rapid light ships, the Osprey Navy is the only one that I would really recommend. And I have a fit set aside that I want to test. Um, and the reason why I would only... I would consider that one as you still have the, as you know, the two tar turret hard points. Can't talk. And those turret hard points, even though they're not bonused, if you were to say run exotic and put blasters on it, that accounts for a lot. I mean, you could definitely still run gamma and run probably auto cannons. I mean, you don't have to match the other, but you might as well. So for new pilots that are learning cruisers, I do recommend, even though I know it's it's a huge hit on ISK and there are things you can learn in, I'm over repping. There are things you can learn in frigates. There are certain things that you will only really notice in a cruiser by design, I would say. But my go-to answer for pilots these days is to do both. You need the ISK, do the frig, um, but then when you need to learn cruiser, you have the cruiser as well. Yeah, Osprey Navy, I think I did, it was a fit with an afterburner, a crazy amount of LSEs, and then I had a, a mid slot left over, and I was debating on what to do with it. I think I put an EMF in there. Um, I've also, I know I fit a tracking disruptor in there, because in tier one, if you put a tracking disruptor in there, that buys you a lot of time against Karen. That and I like my gimmicky fits. But I know that the starter Caracal that I recommend right now, which runs a micro warp drive, because new pilots, I mean, on a Caracal, your your ham range is essentially the same as this Munin, um, 16 kilometers. And if you're on an afterburn and you're slow boating after Karen, even being good about your angle of approach, she's going to slap you. Um, so I recommend the micro warp drive so that you just get it over, go for, get it over with quicker. She's going to still hit you hard but you're going to close the distance and she'll, she won't be able to track you for as long. 
and the armor version because you want two webs. And RH is amazing. Reactive armor hardener, that is. Let's get in here for the web range on the Watchman. I learned NPC names and behaviors from T1. Without that, I'm pretty sure I would have died in an early T1 run. Yeah. And for the most part, you see most of what you can come across in the Abyss in Tier 1. And for that, it is good. I mean, it's good for a lot of reasons. This upholder needs to get over here. I'm going to go to the gate. Let's reload while we do. I'm looking at my missile count. We've got 2,800 left, and we had, I think, about 5,700. So if you're doing a set of four... Man, why is this guy taking so long? Get over here. I don't think I'd go into one of these sites without, like a set of four without 4,000 missiles in Nova. And I do think you could, you're just fine with using only Mjolnir and only Nova. And you can see I haven't, I've only used Mjolnir on one spawn right now. And again, you can see that by not being on the gate and letting this guy fall behind, how much time I wasted. And learning in Brig is helpful because you learn how to abuse turret mechanics. But I would say there are a lot of Brig pilots in low tier that just never learn that. Um, because while I would I would say that um, I would say I'm I'm talking to more pilots now about the abyss than I was before, there's still a large number of people in the game that one aren't in lurkers and definitely aren't talking to me. Um, not that anybody has to talk to me. Um, and they're following the advice of, you know, take a worm, don't get closer than 30 kilometers to anything, which works. It's just not optimal, and you don't really learn much. You just learn how to run away. And then when you get caught, you don't know what to do. And I've, I've specifically wrote that in that T1 fact. I might have read it in the regular fact. So yeah, I'd say for a cheap fit, this is doing pretty well. Gaming Vicious. I did T1 with a worm. It worked. I ran right at most spawns. Yeah. I mean, the worm is very strong. It definitely don't get me wrong there. All good. All good. Glad to have you here. Looks like it's your first time here. We're doing the new, new Munin at the moment in Tier 4 Dark. So yeah, the worm is great. If you are Omega, it's not the best option. It is better than some options, but um, you can definitely do things for cheaper and be more effective. Uh, but yeah, you can you can run away from most things, and that's definitely smart. But what I usually tell new pilots is, you know, people make mistakes, and if you find yourself cornered up against the border with a knight, it's good to know how to handle that. We got a bunch of ghostings here, two webs, and a Rodiva. Let's kill this Rodiva as we close range here. Gil and doing T3 Gamma. Excellent. Gila is another strong ship. Now you won't you won't see me run a Gila or an Ishtar because I, I don't like drone gameplay. You can see I'm not even using my drones here, even though I should. Um actually let's send it to the biocache. Um but it is absolutely a strong ship. And the worm is very strong too. Don't don't get me wrong there. It's just very expensive when you can clear T1 as an alpha in a 20 mil ship. Maybe, maybe 25 mil now. Obviously, it won't clear as fast, but you are still doing okay on time. And people make mistakes, and people will lose, you know, 110 mil less worms in tier one. And for a new pilot, I just, again, you weren't here for that part of the conversation, but I, I feel bad recommending a fit like that to a new pilot. Unless they know what they're getting into. I am range damped. I need to go closer. So since I'm damped, my missiles are essentially, and that is something that you'll definitely need to play around with the Munin, is because since you have such low range, you need to um, check your 
disruption. So I'm going to actually fly away from this spawn really quick just to reset them. And you can see that they're on me at the moment. I've got one web on me. Let's take care of that guy. We're going to kill this, this guy next. Because I have good reps, but, you know, we are still immune and Minmatar are versatile, but they don't necessarily excel at a, a certain tank type. And now they've all reset. I'm just going to go back in. The, the ghosting are still using their missile disruption on me, and that's why they're still red box. And in this time, I can reload. Yeah, I'm still running T0 with my Kestrel. Got 100% survival. Learn how to destroy the bad spawn. Hookbill and Caracal. Yep. Hookbill is a great ship, and it's a very pretty ship, too. And I need to essentially just fly at these ghostings until I kill them. Yeah. Ramming testers is, is never a good thing. Mamba Perfido. Thank you for the follow. Glad to have you here. So let's kill this. I know we still have ghostings on the field, but let's kill this Tangling next. That way, if I need to pull range easier, I can. I mean, most of the Kikimoras are gone now. But that's how you do it. I mean, if, if I sat here and just tried to face tank this spawn, they absolutely would have killed me. Um, but you just fly away. Yeah, Dervis, I'm, I'm glad the uh, Kestrel's working out. I think, again, if, if I had to start over, um, going... Kestrel or Punisher is a very solid option. Punisher can technically do tier one on day one. You just have to have the knowledge to do it. And then if you just want to do T0, which is good money uh, for a new character, a new pilot, uh, then any of the races work. Uh, it is easy in a way, but people need to understand that they need to swap crystals based on what ranges they fight at. And they need to understand tracking. So if you know that, yes, it's easier and it's mechanically stronger. But brand new pilots, and that's really who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about if I rerolled today what I would what I would be able to do with the ship. And that's something that I try to account for when I do the, like the Kestrel guide or the Hopeful guide. Any guide, really. Any fit. Like a lot of times I'll just sit still and, and see how bad it's going to be. And you see me don't use in heat um, for that reason. One of the reasons. You can see once this guy's chasing me, I hit him for 1100 again. Yep. Five minute room, definitely slow room for us. That's just a lot of reps. And I flew away. So we could have killed probably another Kiki more in that time. Saw some crazy tank about it. Like up to more than a retribution based DHP. Yeah. So a lot of the new are just starter. So we've got a speed cloud here. I want to get out of it and I don't want to sit in here. We're, we've got a 50%. We're going to bounce off the gate. This is actually very dangerous. This is a mistake. We want to kill these snare casters. We want to kill the blast grips next. Next, let's kill the tessera. This blast grip, just because we have them targeted. So what happened there? Involved period. Speed cloud put me right into tesseras. As I veered off to get out of them, I um, bounced off the gate. And bad timing. And we've talked about the tesseras a lot. Bad timing. I could have eaten some wrecking shots there, and it would have just been my fault for not paying attention. So what I want to do, we don't have any Gaming Vicious, thank you for the follow. So what I want to do, I want to kill these field weavers next. Let's clear these webs because then I can more safely fly around these tesseras. And tesseras have 4,000 tracking. So what you need to do is get out of range because they will be able to track you. I should probably take this room seriously on time too. 
you can see just how much reps these um, field weavers are getting. Let's head towards the group. I might actually swap off this snare caster. Yeah, um, tracking can be, but it, it's just getting people to not just, look how much time I'm wasting on this guy. That was a mistake I should have swapped off earlier. I'm already surviving with the web on me. Um, and they, these guys just die so quickly. Yeah, it's, it's getting people to use like the keep it range command. So when I would, for a while I was putting together a, a Punisher guide, if you just use keep it range command for just under your crystal optimal, you can track with small beams with no skills. Still not understand the test for countermeasure. They always keep me with wrecking shots. Yeah. So they have 4,000 tracking, which for practical purposes is infinite tracking. Um, so you have to outrange them. They have a two kilometer optimal outside of darks and a six kilometer fall off. So when a ship is in fall off, it can still do damage to you. It just has a higher chance to miss based on range. And what people are talking about is you want to be far enough away that it has a 0% chance to hit you because if it has any chance to hit you above zero, it can wrecking shot you. Okay, all the reps are dead. Let's start on the spark rip. You can see that right there was a wrecking shot. So in the beginning, if when I bounced out the gate, if I got wrecked by all four of them, you're dead. To me, that, that doesn't mean this fit is not viable. It's, I mean, most ships, if you eat a wrecking shot from four testers at once, you are at least in hull. Just like people that say, well, what happens if Karen wrecks you three times in a row? And it's like, well, you die. I mean, what if she wrecks you four times in a row? I have wrecked the Overmind three times in a row myself. So, understand. So Derivus, just go to um, pull range on the Tesseras. And if you're on that website, I'm just gonna link with the command that I know is, is working right now. On that website, I have a T1 specific page. And if you scroll all the way down, I added a back portion for T1. And it specifically talks about the Tesseras. Yeah, ramming the gate, knowing that I'm in a speed cloud, knowing that I'm in a tesser room. And again, it comes back to um, not paying attention, talking and, and whatnot. That's fine. And this set of four is taken. Well, I mean, I, I did take a break. I took, I think, two breaks in there. And I talked after I popped drugs. So we're doing about one less run an hour. Well, in a set, then our Aki Tursa. But obviously, we're a lot cheaper than the Aki Tursa. But to me, at least, um, this is a pretty, pretty relaxed, laid back fit. And I did not loot. I'm going to burn a lot of time in here. Where's that cash? And actually, I'm not even going to loot. I don't care. I've got time, but. Nine minutes. Do I? Yeah, I'll loot. I'll loot. Um, in low tier, yes. The thing with the Vedmac is, by the time you put a fit on it that will run tier three and higher, you've spent enough that you might as well just be in an Icky Tursa, because that Icky Tursa will have stats that you need baked in with no modules on it. So is it viable? Yes. Um, not for anything you, you would want to be. It was cataclysmic exotic. That was a decent cash. Uh, so yeah, batteries, you're going to put a lot of Ansel, or at least one probably T2 Ansel rig on there. It adds up. 
I've been wrecked in darks at 14 kilometers versus a Tessera, which would be about 70 kilometers out. We got the exact same spawn. We got tracking pylon, speed cloud, we got no, I'm not seeing any blue clouds. So they're gonna, what's gonna happen here is they're going to deactivate and they're gonna come through the speed cloud at me. So I'm going to go through the speed cloud and go the opposite direction. And the frigs should be able to keep up with me. There we go. Let's drop this, do this, drones out. Drones on the biocache. Let's go over here. Big cloud, big cloud. There we go, drones back. Cause I don't want any of those mobs to go after those drones. Not that I'm worried about them killing them, but I, I want them over by me. And we'll just kind of set up here. Turn, boat, turn. You can see the border's coming up. 51 kilometers here. Right on the edge. Let's go in for this guy. We've got Strike Grip, two Blast Grips. I'm looking at the names because it tells me their damage type. And since we're going to be here, I'm going to drop the MTU. It looks like our application on these field waivers is actually pretty decent, and they're thin. Which is good, because we got a number of them to kill. And if this was the Ecotursi, you just smart bomb these guys. And you can see, right, like right here, we're in 50%. We've got test rate 5 kilometers, 7 kilometers. We're okay. Not that we can't eat a bad string of wrecking shots, but as long as you're moving, it's a lot safer. And you can manipulate their poor battle cruiser agility to your advantage. To make sure that they keep slingshotting you. And I, I will, this is the last run of the set, I will use heat here. There's no reason not to. We took that extra time to loot. Four Tesseras isn't too bad time-wise. We got here. And like what I'm doing here, this is a risk. A needless risk to loot this. Blast scripts. One last field weaver left. So we've got... Blast scripts are the fastest Tessera out there. I'm going to hit him with the missiles because I want to go back to gate. I think I want to go back to gate. Where's that speed cloud? Yeah, we're okay if we stay on this side. Let's stop our ship. I don't want to be completely out of range. Ember grips are already coming up on me. This guy. Come on, catch up. We'll set our 7,500 meter orbit there around that ember grip. And we'll just watch our position, make sure we don't get too far away. I, I would go all the way, but I don't want to let myself clip that speed cloud. Not good for anybody. We'll do this Tesser next because he's already damaged. We're going to hit a reload here. So let's do this. We're going to kill this Tesser, then we're going to go back to the gate. We're going to reload on the way because we know we're going to hit a reload. We've got 10 seconds where we're not going to be shooting anything. Would have been... No, it's the same. It's the same. I'm going to turn off my prop mod. And you'll see me do this with the Ikaturza. I'm going to stop my ship, turn off my prop mod. I just want these guys to catch up to me. I don't want to outrun them. They're at range. I'm at no risk here relative you know low risk but i have to close this distance i mean i'm fine on time but you can definitely see where 
you know, looting there, not being on the gate, it adds up. Like, oh, I only added a minute on this run, you know, each room. Well, we wouldn't be talking about the timer at all if I was, you know, paying more attention to being efficient. And the more you do that, I mean, your run times will significantly improve. So right here, this guy's going to die, and we're basically right where we need to be, and we're out. So that was another set of four in the Munin. Decent loot. I mean, it's okay loot, 20 mil. Let's see here. You definitely eat a lot of missiles. I think that was my full stack of Nova Rage that I brought out. I'm not going to do another set with only 1,500. Decent. That's 50 mil. That's 20 mil. That's nothing. It's okay. For, for four runs, it's okay. I would say even if, if it was a five run set, it's still going to be a low set. I don't think I missed any cans. So what I'll probably do is I will highlight this um, these sets and I will link it on that Dark Munin portion of that website. And then people can just reference it if they want to see the bit. It's interesting that they that they wanted to put this docking UI here. And you can see, for some reason, I'm always looking straight up at my ship. I mean, sometimes it's, it's more steep. It actually reset there when I touched it. Okay, take the loot out. We got on time. It is 11.20. Yeah. It's not bad. Not game breaking. So for our two sets, not, you know, definitely not amazing. Loot eight runs, two hours, 200 mil. But so if, if you were getting into faction warfare because the faction warfare update is out, that's a few hurricanes, you know, two well-fit hurricanes. Did you time to time reset your reactive? Yeah. So, I mean, I'll turn everything off as good practice leaving a room because it's cap. And if, I mean, a reactive hardener with good skills and on a cruiser is not a lot of cap, but if you're running a reactive on a smaller ship, it's actually a lot of cap. Yeah, I don't like this skin's UI. I wish I could deactivate that. Um, but there are opportunities where mid room, you can reset your reactive. Like if, say with the Tesseras, I had three Ember Grips and one Strike Grip, I'd kill the Strike Grip and then I would reset. And then I would just enjoy 60% more resist for Ember, which would be great. I'm glad that we got a Sancho room. So I've had Sanchez, I've had Angels. We had, you know, that first run of the night was full Angels. If you can hear my uh, daughter crying, just let me know and I'll turn down the game. Um, I've, I've seen most rooms in this fit now, so I don't think anything is, is going to be a surprise to me at this point. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate everybody stopping by. Because it is nearly 1130, I'm going to start winding down and, and give my wife a break. Like I said earlier, my daughter is not feeling well, so uh, she's been upset tonight. But I appreciate everybody stopping by. This has been the Cheap Dark Munin. I will run this in Tier 5 on stream uh, probably in the next coming days. I'll probably run it as is until you know I make a mistake and lose it. Or I just over oversell what it can do. Um, but this should be fine. If I change anything, it would be to go to a second bat and drop a web. Um, ah, good, good, good. Uh, well, the baby, she she went upstairs uh, because she's pretty upset. Um, she's okay, but she just doesn't feel good. And she only has one way of communicating it, communicating it to us. Um, but yeah, if I go to double bat, I will go to double nanobot because I want a faster cycle time on this rep. Um, because if I keep adding, especially if you add Asclepians, you don't want to 
you know, rep 120% of your armor HP per cycle because it's, it's wasted. Uh, the Marauders, like the Kronos, has an issue with that too. Can have an issue with that. Uh, but yeah, appreciate everybody hanging out. Let's find somebody to raid. Now, I won't stream. Maybe I mean, maybe I'll stream tomorrow. I have a holiday tomorrow, so it's Veterans Day in the States. That means I can go get my free Subway sandwich. Free six-cent Subway sandwich. Oh, yeah, definitely. I appreciate you hanging out. Always enjoy the conversation. Let's see here. Wormhole Police is online. If you've watched me at all, you know that I enjoy them. Very different stream than, than what I do. Let's see who else is here. Yeah, Wormhole Police is it. So again, I appreciate everybody hanging out. Um, if you haven't followed me, uh, please do. One, obviously it helps me, but two, I because I have a, a young daughter, I don't have a normal stream schedule and I'm not a, a full-time streamer by any means. I just stream when I can. If you're in my Discord, I, I always say like, hey, I've got time tonight, I'm gonna do it tonight, or I might even give a, a day's heads up. Uh, but follow is the easiest way. Uh, but yeah, so let me set up for this raid. Thank you again. You're always welcome to reach out and DM me with questions about this fit or about any of my fits. The Abyss or just even general. Let's do this. Oh yeah, Mac, you're welcome. It, I mean, it's definitely a fun fit. It's very mechanically similar to me. To the Serb, you just have to worry about different spawns. So yeah, we are ready to raid. I will catch everybody later.